Hello and welcome to 13th Floor's first video tutorial on making an intro screen. Of course, you can watch ours right here. We did it just for y'all. Nice motion graphic. What we're going to be doing today is using two pictures to make a motion background. So exit this out and see the two things we'll be working with. First thing you do is make a new comp. We'll call it intro screen. There we go. Intro scene. Uh, we're using 39 frames per second, well, 29 frames per second, and we're going to make it about 10 seconds long. There we go, a big one zero. So, now that we have our comp open up, we're going to move in the first background, which is a painted warehouse scene. I found these on Google Images, so I'm not sure who they belong to, but since we're just doing this as a test, I'm sure it won't mind that much. We're going to click Fit to Comp, and... There we go. Now it's as big as we want it to be. Now we'll bring in the second one. And we're going to do the same thing to it. Go up to Transform and Fit to Comp or Control-Alt-F. And you're like, well, now we can't see the background. We're going to fix that. Now we're going to click that and go up to our Pen Tool. And now we're going to make a mask. Here we go. We just click and we're going to kind of fly through this, show you how to make a rough mask around the first object. Here I go, lightning fast. Look at me go. And like I said, don't worry about being too perfect with it because once we're done, we're going to feather it and it's going to, it's going to blend right on in. So you want it close, but you know, don't have to be super perfect with it. Now you see we have it all backwards. So what we're going to have to go into. We're going to go down to mask and feather it. Well, now we're going to subtract it. That way it brings back the image we cut out and takes away the image that we did cut out. Now we're going to make three more holes just to match out all the windows. There they are done. And now we're going to feather them. So we're going to come down here to masks and hit M and then or hit F. That works too. Hit F takes you straight to them, and we're going to do about three feather on them. Just kind of give them a very smooth kind of blend into the background. So now we have our two pictures all cut out. Now what we're going to do is we are going to scale them out so we can see them. And you're asking, why do you scale them out? Well, we're going to make them motion background. So if we make them much larger than our render area, we pretty much have a lot of room to play and move it around as you can see so now we'll be able to drag it and we'll be able to see the background of it or the back of the comp I should say it's our first tutorial so bear with me we're going to do the same to the front screen we're going to make it slightly smaller but still much larger than the composition so now we have two and of course you see they're not moving all right next we are going to go what should we do next we should probably do the positioning on them and as soon as I stop playing here we go we're gonna move them around there we go and we'll be able to position them where we want them to so right now I'm gonna put this right here and the broken glass one is going to be moved right and uh, we're going to make it opposite. There we go. So that way, we're going to hit P for position on each one. Go ahead and just hit P, position, position. And you click that little stopwatch right there, we'll make a keyframe. And with the keyframe, it the computer remembers exactly where it is. So I'm sure everyone here already knows that, or at least we hope you do. And go ahead and move to the end of the comp and reposition where you want it to be at the end so what you do is move all the way to the end of the comp and all the way back see how it moves back and forth there we go and we're going to do the same with the other comp so now we move it across all right now we have an animation but you're like oh john this is completely backwards from the first one you know, the one you showed us. Why, why is it backwards? I'm going to explain that in a second. What we want, first wanted to show you is like the versatility of keyframes. Take a keyframe at the beginning, keyframe at the end. 
you can move these keyframes to speed, slow, reverse your animation easily just by clicking the keyframe. So I'm going to go ahead and select both keyframes and just move it around so you can change the speed, change exactly where that keyframe's at. So we're going to come over here and now we're going to click those and oops, I highlighted both of them. So we can move the animation. We just want to collect those, move it to the front, and move those to the rear. Ha ha! Now you see we have the animation you see at the beginning. Just like that. A little quick render out to test it. Pretty nice, you say, huh? Yeah, well, we're going to add a lot more to it here in a second. Since I'm done playing, I'm amused by my own animation. It's just, it's just the fun never ends here. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is come up here and create a new solid. You can hit Control Y or go up to the layer and select New Solid. Ta-da! Click. We're going to call this solid Dust in the Wind. All we are is dust in the... Okay, we're not going to be singing here, but... That title will make sense very, very soon. We want to make sure it's comp size. doesn't matter the color. And we're going to click OK. And now we have our new solid. And we're going to put it in between the two layers. That way it's, you know, kind of in the middle. And we're going to come up here to layer. No, we're not going to go layer. Go to effect. And I use trap code particular. It's just because I love the program. It's awesome. You should check it out. It's by trap code. You can also use... Um, CC Particle World. I'm not as familiar with it because I started with um, Trap Code and just kind of went from there. Later found out about partic um, Particular World, Particle World after the fact. And of course, you can see me now playing with the particles. And I'm going to move the toolbar, the layer bar up. So now we have more of a start going on there. And then I'll drag that to the end. Now, as you see, now the particles are already started. So we don't have to. Wait for the initial poof of particles. And we'll come up here to the particular settings, change the emitter to box. Now we can adjust the emitter size from its small little 50. And of course, we'll just scale it up and make sure it's large. We want it large and in charge. Um, of course, it's not going to matter too much. We're about to scale up the actual solid. To match the, um, I do believe we're going to use the painted background. So we'll come down here to scale and just scale it up. Me typing in completely the wrong measurements. I was reading my notes earlier and just completely messed it up. So we're going to do this manually. Let's pop out here and just, wee, let's do this manually. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just get a rough idea of the size. Just make sure it's larger than the background layer. All right, here we go. Now see, now the particle, no matter where we go, it works. And we're going to come down here, click the little pinwheel, and parent it to the painted background. That means when we move it, you'll be able to see it moves with the background as it fills one layer. So it's a great way to be able to make multiple animations with only doing one keyframe position. It works with some things, doesn't work with others. Next, we're going to come up here and change the type to Glow Sphere. Glow Sphere kind of gives it a little glow to it. Just a little subtleness. We're going to change it to full so you can get an idea. I work in half res. That way it works faster. Um, next, we'll come down here probably to the color, and we're going to set the color from at birth to over life. And, of course, now it's going to change it to, like, the rainbow funk going on here. Uh, we're not going to use rainbow funk. We're going to stretch this out and check out our settings and make it two colors. Uh, I don't like the white because the white is just way too bright and it looks like it's snow. So we're going to change it down to a real good medium gray. All right, now we have it. It's starting to look a little better there. You can still tell it's very, very noticeable in the background. We want to make a very subtle pattern to it. So what we're going to do now is go over to the opacity. That's find the opacity opacity over life first we'll probably change the opacity over life to a more subtle that's not very subtle. it's very very linear so we're gonna change that here in a second let's see let's just you can draw hand draw your line so let's make a little more of a crooked 
okay, I don't know what I did there. I just made a very bad linear line. It works. We're, we're going to go with it. We're going to bring up the opacity random to about 30 and bring down the opacity to about 33. I think. Let's go for it. 33. Let's take bets. Boom, 33. I knew it. I recorded this earlier. And now you can see, I don't know, if you're watching it in high definition, you can definitely tell the particles in the background. If you're not, they're harder to see. But that's the point. The point is to make them very subtle so they're barely noticeable in the motion. And you're like, well, why do it if it's barely noticeable? It's because your mind will pick up on those little things to make it kind of seem more tangent and creepy and all those other little fun things. I mean, it's a very optional step. You don't have to do it in your motion graphics if you just don't want to mess with it. And it's not one of those things that if you don't have it, they're going to make fun of you for it. At least I hope they won't. Maybe you shouldn't show it to those people if they make fun of you for it. Anyway, now moving on, we're kind of seeing the motion. Make sure everything lines up. Both bars don't come across the comp. So now we're going to come over here, close that out. We are done with that layer. Look at that. Ta-da! We're going to come up here and make a new adjustment layer. You can go Control-Shift-Y or just go up to the menu. And I'm playing with the adjustment layer. Nothing has changed. Adjustment layer is a very adjustable layer. It's nothing on there. It's a clean slate. We're going to come over here and go to color correction. We're going to put a curves on there. I love curves. It's the best way to edit color. And now we're going to do a tint. So come over here to color and click tint. Now it's black and white. We don't want black and white, but we do want to change the color. So we're going to bring the tint down to about, I'd say 40 and 40%. And change it to more of a bluish dark. Yeah, we want we want it to be very night. We want to establish nighttime in there. So for the dark airiness. And you can use any color, of course. From green to yellow to red to kind of mm, excuse me. Initiate the timeline to see I mean not timeline, the color scheme to feel how you want it to feel. I know I'm kind of rambling on here. We're going to get better at these, I promise. Uh, next, we're probably going to go up to the Curves channel, and we're going to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And you're like, well, you're supposed to make it dark. It'll make sense in a little bit. So we'll just brighten it up just a tad. takes out some of the red, give it more of a greenish blue feel to it. There we go. Get that nice dark, but still well lit. It's like a full moon kind of feel to it. And there's a test render of what we got so far. Very pretty. I like it. And you can see everything kind of just moves in with it. So now we're going to do a new black solid. We're going to call this the creepy oval. Yeah. And you're like, what is that? Why with the creepy ovalness? I'll show you. Go up here to the ellipse tool. Click it. It's a little circle. And then I want you to double click it. If you double click it, it will make a poof. There's the giant circle now in our screen. Fun, fun, right? Now we're going to take it. And first, well, don't do that yet. Now we're going to subtract the mass so we have a nice little circle cut. And then we're going to feather it. I'd say about 140 something, 145. That way it gives a very nice soft feel to it. Then we're going to classic color burn it. And that's this transfer mode. Classic color burn. And see, it kind of gives that very burnt in effect and we're going to bring down the opacity to about i don't know let's see 30 35 right 30 there we go 35 my favorite color anybody else get that so now we see it has a very dark filter to it you'll see this a lot of times a lot of times it'll be very unnoticeable for a very intro video it has a very creepy effect to it. I like it. Again, it's one of those optional things. You don't have to throw it in there, but it's fun. I like it. It has a good feel to it. You can change that color too. You can make it any color you want. All right, what do we got now? Now we're going to add a little bit of. I think I think we're done. We're going to change the positions. Oh yeah, we're going to move the positions up to get a little bit of a. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to adjust the positions just slightly so that way we can get our text in there. We're about to type some text in there and show you how to make the text motion with it too. 
All right, now well, we got that fixed. Ta da! I know it's not making any sense. I should capture better in future updates. All right, so we come down here to the text tool and we're going to type out. Of course, we're going to do some shameless promoting, Insidious Mindset Productions. Here we go, typing it out. All right, oh, I misspelled it. There we go. That spelled right, I think. I don't know, I'm a horrible speller. That's why I do motion graphics. I don't have to spell anything. That's spell check. All right, then we're going to take that. I don't like how the spacing is, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the spacing here in a second. Adjust the size, bring it up. And the production just seems too far away from the first line. So we're going to come over here to the spacing adjustment and adjust it. Bring it real close together. That way we can stretch it out and kind of put it together. Oh, nope, don't want to move that layer. Put it back. There we go. And we're just going to fill around with this, get it in a nice spacing. And the reason, reason we're putting it so small is because it's going to be behind the broken glass layer. Boom, there it is, behind the dust and the broken glass. That way it seems to be very, very much a part of the background. Of course, we're going to scale it down so you can see it. There we go. Now, it's a very subtle title to it. You can make them bolder. Of course, you don't have to use this image. You can use any image. This does work with all images, I hope. If it doesn't, there may be something wrong. Then we're going to parent it to our painted background, our painted warehouse background. Now, see, it stays exactly where it's supposed to be according to the background. See, ta-da, now we got a little motion here, a little motion there. But our text stays put. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the fade in for the text and we're going to do the fade in and kind of blur and make it kind of very fancy pantsy here. It's real simple. We're just going to take the opacity, click the keyframe where we want it to stop, where we want it to be full opacity, come back, and I'd say about a couple seconds, maybe a second and a half before that, and bring it down to zero. So now it's completely invisible and it fades in. Now I know that's kind of boring, very simplistic, but we're going to add a little bit of flavor to it. So. We're going to go up to Effects and we're going to click Blur and Sharpen. Go to Blur and Sharpen and Directional Blur. It's a very f cool thing I found out. I was bored one day. We're going to make it about a 90 degree blur. And then we're going to set keyframes for the blur length. We're going to come right after it f completely fades in. We're going to come up here and keyframe a zero blur. Actually, we'll probably make it, you now we'll keep it zero. And then right before it starts to fade in, we're going to come up here and adjust the length to about, I'd say, 100. Make it very simple. Unless you're in Russia, then it should be 140. Now, see, it kind of blurs in a little bit. Now, a lot of people, when they're using the blur, they like to keep it a little bit blurry. So a lot of people will do an adjustment here, like 5%, 1%. I, I think I'm going to use a 0.5, and you can't really tell. Maybe a little bit, no, bring it up to about a 1. You still can't tell, I mean, it's a it's a hit and miss thing. It makes it a little softer, I guess, with the background. And I can never tell, but other people tell me they can tell, so maybe I'm just not hip enough. Anyway, here we go, we've got it all worked out. We're going to render it out and see what we like with it. Oh, no, wait, we got one more task. I almost forgot. How, 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 how am I going to let you forget? How are you going to let me forget? This is our first tutorial, and I'm already forgetting things. It's your fault, people. You're stressing me out. All right, let's go up here and make a new solid. All right. Click it, and we're just going to call this the fade in. Yeah, fade in. Click OK. All right, just solid black, and you're like, well, now we can't see anything. We're going to do the same thing we did with the letters. We're just going to make an opacity, keyframe it at zero, bring it about to the beginning, keyframe 100. That way, it blends everything in. A lot of people, they will render out a comp and then add the fade in. I figured it's a solid. It doesn't take up that much space. It's not hard to make a complete fade to black and fade to not black. Fade's not black. Oh, I need I need to write more notes. And then now we can have it fade out. I just figure it's a simple way to make sure everything works 100% exactly the way you want it to. 
nothing fades in too fast or doesn't fade in enough so now here's the final render isn't it pretty and there's other things you can do you can add uh, a little bit of blur to the front image like a lens blur they all come standard with the after effects program and you can adjust the color here and you can make it any color you want to like you can punch up the red watch it somewhere I'm gonna go crazy with the red bring it up oh it's got a red tint then you can bring it all the way down take it all the way out make it very blue very Harry Potterish. All right, now we can adjust the lighting here. That's a good way to fade out if you, when you're using it, you can just fade. All right, apparently that's all the time we have left. So thank y'all for watching and I appreciate it. Stay tuned for new tutorials. Of course, always add suggestions, comments, hate mail, all that in the text below. And let us know what y'all wanna learn. I mean, if we don't know it, we'll learn it and teach you to learn it. All right, goodbye.